Hi, this is Charlie Roy, and welcome to Sonar X2. Today we're going to be going over MIDI 101. First thing you want to do is go to Edit and Preferences. You can also do this by hitting P on your keyboard. You want to go to Metrodome and set this up for one. We want to have a four count before we come in and do some recording. And we want to go to Devices. Very important, we want to make sure that our keyboard is selected under MIDI Devices. Make sure that's a, a Yahoo. Hit Apply and then hit OK. Now right away we're going to go to Insert. And today we're going to insert Studio Drums. Studio Drums a little bit different than Session Drummer. In this case, we're going to have a MIDI source. We want to have all synth audio outputs. This will not give you all separate tracks like Session Drummer will. But what this will do is give you a MIDI source. You can't have a simple instrument track and a MIDI source. You need to have all synth outputs. Hit OK. Now, a little different than Session Drummer. Studio Instrument Drums comes up. It's got a default kit loaded right away. As you can see, it's not a bad sounding kit. And before Session Drummer, I mean, hey, I had this kit. I thought it was awesome. You should basically now be able to hear your keyboard. If not, you have to go and check all. Make sure this is checked to all. You can either expand this, okay, and make sure your input is your oxygen. Almost like the drum, the drum machine video I did, okay? This has to be your input, has to be your keyboard. Pretty simple. The output, hey, has to be the drum kit, right? It's, it's rooting. Now, if you didn't want to expand this, you could easily use the inspector and come down here and make sure that was select the oxygen which you can see it has been changed because I changed it here so it's a matter of preference basically but now that I've done that I should be able to hit my keys on my keyboard and as you can see it's working great so um, what we're gonna do now is go over a little bit of MIDI recording okay there's a few ways you can do this the easiest way, which I'm going to take this and close it right now. The easiest way I find right now is we're going to set up a loop. This can be done really easy. What you want to do is click and let's drag out until you get to the six. Okay, now easily click on the loop module. You got to you set up a loop right there automatically. If you didn't want to click on the module, you can always right click set loop points. This is the same way that you can set up punch recording by doing the same drag move and then going set punch in points. Then if you went back here and you hit play, it would punch record in here and it would keep going. Keep that in mind if you're ever doing punch recording. We're not going to be doing punch recording today, so we can turn it off here or simply use the punch in module. We are going to be doing loop recording. So let's get this set up for a loop. Okay? Now, we want to get our fingers on the keyboard. Now, in my case, I don't know about you, but I can't do five instrument, like on a drum, I can't be using my feet and my hands, okay? On a drum kit, you're using both feet and your hands. I can't use my four fingers and play this kit. I can use maybe three if I'm, you know, ambidextrous on my best days, you know? But... What I will do is do multi-track layering when I'm using my fingers and keyboards. So, what I'm going to do is use my two fingers for my bass and my drum. My kick and my drum. Okay? Now we set up our metrodome. So it gave us a four count, so we will hear a four count. As you can see, that's probably the saddest attempt I've ever made at trying to record something. Anyways, what we're going to do now is right-click. You right-click and hold and lasso. Lasso, baby, like a cowboy. Okay, that whole clip right there, okay? Now that this is highlighted, go to your QWERTY keyboard and press Q. What this does is bring up Quantize. Now, you just heard that train wreck of a beat I just recorded that wasn't even close to being on time right so what we did is we opened up 
quantize. Anybody that's ever got MIDI drums that are completely sloppy, you know, I say to them, why don't you just quantize it? We're going to set the strength on this to 100 because I was just such an idiot right there. We can audition it right here and listen to it. Wow, hey, I sound pretty good, don't I? Amazing what electronics can do. You can even set up your own settings. If I wanted to set this for 80%, my swing for 70 you can save it, and you can use it on the drop-down list, and you can have different type of quantizing um, presets, which is, which is really, really handy, believe it or not. I don't like my stuff to sound all mechanical, so I will set up presets. I just happen to install Windows 8, though, and I don't have any presets loaded in on my quantize. So anyways, I'm going to hit OK. OK, let's just listen to this real quick and see what it sounds like. Oh my god, I'm a, I'm a magician. That sounds great. Okay, so now we're going to go back. And now we're going to overdub. And we're going to put in the hi-hats. Ready? Let's go. As you can see, another horrible attempt at trying to do hi-hats. We're going to right click again, lasso this whole section, and let's do Q again. Okay, let's do it again, see what it sounds like. That really sounds pretty good to tell you the truth. There's, there's some type of pinging going on in there on the hi-hat, and I will find out what it is. But let me just do this right now. Drop that down there. What we're going to do now is right click that whole clip okay you want to lasso that thing and now right click it again bounce the clips okay now that you've got it bounce the clips let's do this right click it again and groove clip it okay now we just turned it right into a groove clip what this does is now we can take this thing and run it out I can drag this thing out to the 10 and you see you see these little V shapes right here it shows us where the clip is doubling you can also tell a groove clip from a regular clip because it's got these rounded corners to it. Okay, I'm going to click undo for a second, control Z. You can see how the clip is square. This is not a groove clip. When I change it to a groove clip, it's got rounded edges. So, let's drag this bad boy out, like I said. And now we've got a double section. You know, you can hear it. I can turn the loop off now. Now something's driving me crazy about this. And it could have been my keyboard, you know, the way I was pounding out in the velocity. Um, but let's see if I can fix that somehow. It, it really doesn't look like I can fix this thing here with the with the kit and with, you know, by using tuning settings. So I'm going to have to go a different route. Let me open this in the piano roll view. Okay. You can do this a couple different ways. You can go view, which I'm going to do right now, piano roll view in the dark here. Okay, we're going to find the instrument that is the assaulter. It's the clothes hat. Now that I've got all them highlighted, okay, I have all these highlighted. What I'm going to need to do is mag in on it, man. Magnify it. Get in closer and tighter. Okay. Now, as you can see, the pencil tool is changing when I am hovering above it. What I want to do now is bring these bad boys down a little bit. Okay, they're a little bit loud, to be honest with you. So, I also can do this. I brought these bad boys down a little bit. I think my best bet right now, though, is to go to the smart tool and use the line tool. Let's start here, and let's go like this. Okay, let me just kind of bring this into life a little bit. I kind of got that the best I could. Let's listen to this thing again. Much, much better. I at least got rid of that pinging sound that was there before. Um, if you're somebody who likes to be able to here um, see the sine wave 
This little thing right here will give you a, a preview on the sine wave. Now obviously you know with MIDI you can't see the sine wave, so this is a great little feature also to have right here. Okay, so what I've done now is I've inserted the PX64 percussion strip. Okay, let's see if we can get this stereo sounding drum kit to sound any better than it already does, which I believe we can. So let's see. That isn't bad, to be honest with you. That really isn't too bad. You know, I might want to clean up the lower end a little bit. It's just, uh, that might be the mids in there. You know what? You know, just, a, just a little. But I tell you, boy, that open hat sounds great, don't it? You know what? The, to be honest with you, though, be ha before what we had, I mean, you know, even you listen to it now without even the percussion strip. That sounds pretty cheesy. And it's really hard to gauge without any other instruments with it, too, you know? I mean, when I've done sound before. Um... And I've had to do this with just setting up a drummer. It's the first thing I usually do when I set up a band is I do the drummer first, you know, going through the, the instruments. But, you know, it, it helps to have a lot of other instruments surrounding the drums to get an even better sound. But to be honest with you, the Studio Instruments drum kit, hey, this isn't bad if you can set it up right. So I hope you enjoyed the lesson. I'll talk to you guys next time.